thing it's, it's new technology I, I forget it a lot but yeah um so yeah i'm super excited to have both uh Jakub and robin uh here to talk about the book your competition with r we went we read uh together uh in the air for the science communities we started i think in february uh, i think we missed only one week and we we started strong at 10 people and then at the end we were four of us so we lose a bit of people I feel bad about that, but I hopefully people like uh, are able to join in in the um, in the YouTube instead of uh, from the session, which was out to which was like mostly on American time zone. So we lose, uh, I think, a lot of people from India and Europe. And yes, so we went from nearly one chapter per week, except the last chapters where we which was like the chapter, like the application, we were able to do two per weeks. So that's the general idea of it. Um, well, other people uh, in the chat have read it, so they can also like provide background. Um, that's it. Uh, I think like for the book club, I said I, I'm, I'm pleased to have facilitated. I think it was uh, enjoyable and I appreciate the other people in the, in the book club. Um, but yeah, that's it. So, Jakub and Robin, can you introduce yourself very quickly? Like, no need to to go the full academic, maybe. <laughs> and uh, just like, uh, and I will add a quick, quick question: like, why did you write this book, and to whom? Also, so go ahead. I can make a, a start on that if you like. Um, yeah, there's there's a very good story on there of why we wrote the book. Um, think for fun because we both thought it would be a good idea to put together some materials we saw um, we, we were both massive fans of ASDAR which was applied spatial data analysis in R um, and I think that was uh, May, perhaps 2016 when I went to Poznan to teach an R course and had a conversation with Jakub and I said yeah I've put together some ideas I'd written a tutorial that got way more popular than I expected. And so this is where the idea of the, like maybe if I can write a, a long tutorial, maybe I could even write a book um, and the need for something that was accessible. Um, and then had a conversation with Jakub who helped on the course. And then we had a beer and a social after. And he was like, ah, oh, in parallel, I've also written some tutorials in, in Polish. I've got an idea for a book. So we decided we decided to to join forces as well. So I that's that's how the book started from my perspective. I'm going in the wrong order. So in terms of who I am, uh, my name is Robin. Um, I'm based at the University of Leeds in the UK. I'm also now working for uh, an agency called Active Travel England. So I'm doing work for central government to try to generate the evidence needed to get more people out of cars and more people walking, biking, wheeling. So I'm really committed to um, using data science and new technologies for public policy and hopefully uh, social good. And I'm one third of the geocomputation with our team with Jakub and Yanis. So I'll hand over to Jakub to, to introduce him himself, but that's me, hi all. Thanks, Oliver. Thanks, uh, Robin. Um, so I'm Jakub. I'm an assistant professor at the Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznan, Poland. And I just enjoy the open science and open source aspect of, of the work I, I'm, I've been doing for the last several years. Um, yeah, I think Robin uh, shared the story, but uh, the question was also about our who were or are, is our audience or expected audience. So when were we uh, been talking during this uh, social event uh, in the afternoon? We were basically discussing ourselves a few years back. So that was our audience first. We were like, oh, it would be good to have this kind of a book available when we were starting our PhDs or, or doing some work. So we were just uh, trying to create materials for people in a similar position to us uh, just a few years back. So, so that was the, the idea. Thanks.
you're on mute, Olivier. I think you may need to unmute yourself uh, if you're talking. Yeah, yeah. Two years of Zoom and I still fell at that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a space also like. Um, so uh, bef I mean, before asking maybe the question like from the Slido, maybe some people here like Federica, Derek, Jim, or Philip want to start a quick, like, like go ahead, maybe live question better like earlier than the um, Slido question as you like. I can jump into the Slido question. Perfect. I'm jumping into the Slido question. Okay, so let me uh, open it quickly. So I will go by order of votes. Um, well, I think it's fair. <laughs> no one, not many people voted, but that's fine. Uh, so uh, there's Anonymous who said like he was uh, grateful that there are English, Spanish, French, and Japanese community translation of the book. Are you aware of the text being used in academic courses, which make good transition from what you have seen previously? So that's good. Maybe I can jump here. Um, basically, um, we also have, maybe just to uh, be more complete, we also have uh, official Japanese and official Korean translation of the book. So it's all also uh, on those markets. And I think the Korean one is made by academics. Uh, so I think it's used there uh, in, in some of their courses. But of course, it's much, much harder for us to search for the use of the book in Korea or Japan or China. But I've made some search a few years ago. So on our website, uh, I can share you a link in the in the chat. On our website, we are collecting the or we are gathering the courses that been using the the book, and uh, I've I've found few dozens of those. So there are those are courses from from Berkeley, from uh, University of California in Davis, from University of Chicago, uh, but. Uh, I'm also sure that Robin is including the book in his courses. I'm using the book in my courses. I also know that it is uh, uh, at least mentioned in many courses in, in, in other Polish universities. So so I think that the impact uh, uh, is, uh, again, I think much, much wider than we expected initially with, with Robin. Any reaction, guys? Robin, do you want to add something? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the great but also potentially scary things about putting stuff out there as open is you lose some or you don't you can't control everyone who has access to it. So in the past, the only way for a book to go out is as a as a physical copy and you know how many copies there are. Um, and you like that can be a, a key measure of success of like how many thousands um Whereas this is an open product, so um, it has a license and that license states that you can copy it. Um, it is a relatively restrictive open source license, so um, that doesn't allow people to um, profit from it or make derivative um, copies of it, which encourages feedback. But one of the things is we don't know the full impact, but I'm, I think it's probably a bit like a... Um, yeah, an iceberg where you can see the top, but there's probably a lot of stuff under the surface where people have cloned it. Maybe they've just read um, one page of it and that's changed their, their workflow or they found a solution. So um, we do have a list of maybe half a dozen, probably I would guess more like a dozen now um, official courses in good universities making use of it. And we get emails from academics use, using it. So we know it's used in, in numerous courses, as Jakub said. A really other, a, a really interesting other proxy for how people are using it is actually the citations. So over time, the number of citations has increased and there's a really diverse range of papers citing it. There's a lot on kind of eco-geography. There's quite a lot on kind of social sciences. And I think that shows the the breadth of of the book and i think that that kind of justifies our decision not to say geocomputation for domain x we said you can use it for many different purposes and we're not going to make this distinction between physical sciences and social sciences you can use these techniques for any of those or for your own purposes so 
yeah, if you want to see pe how people are using the book in academia and for research, like looking at the, the, the people who's citing the books, also a really interesting one. And me and Jakub have, have also had uh, messages from people, like I've had a few private Twitter messages just saying, thank you for the book, this is great, or email. So, you know, that's just an amazing thing when you've spent so much time building a thing that you know it's actually being used. So um, yeah, that's that's my follow-up to, to the question and it's really nice to be asked that. So thanks for the question. Yeah. Um, feel free like, we are few, so feel free to speak as uh, in moments like. Um, I'm gonna read the next question, still anonymous. Um, what kind of change, I, this one is me, so. Um, what kind of change do you expect in the geo computation with air ecosystem in the next years? So it's more prospective one. What's, what? What do you think? Okay. Is, uh, maybe, maybe I can start. So I, I read the, the question on half an hour ago and I started thinking about different ideas. Uh, and because I'll also try to look in the past, like what, what changed in the last 10 years and what was the, the, the direction of the change. Uh, but I still think that the main uh, change is that I hope there will be a wider adoption of the, of the ideas. So 10 years ago, mostly it was used by people who work with spatial data directly. And now it's more and more broader, as Robin said, into social sciences, into uh, ecology, biology, and, and many other fields. And, uh, and this is also partially because we have those uh, materials like our book that are publicly available. So people can look and can try rep to reproduce something and they uh, can quickly grasp the knowledge, not by buying some expensive books, but also just by looking uh, on the internet. Uh, so I think this, is, well, this will be maybe um, not a change, but this will be a kind of an, an evolution of the, an expansion of the use of this by people not in the spatial domain directly. Um, but I also think that there will be many different directions possible. So on the one hand, I think there is, we've seen that in the past few years, the, the expansion and the evolution of machine learning tools. Uh, towards spatial data, what's different with spatial, how to validate spatial data, how to uh, maybe explain uh, changes in space. And I think this is not an end topic and then it's going to, to expand. And also another topic that I've seen in the last few years, and I think it's, it's, it's going to uh, go into the, this direction is uh, big ob Earth observation data. So a few years ago, we've, we had this, this data, but now I've, I've seen more and more data analysis products. So people are not just pushing and, 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 pub, and publishing raw data, but they are publishing already data analysis ready product. And I think there'll be a nicer connection and we could just do a lot of things uh, directly in R, like with the, with the tools uh, uh, like, like Seeds, for example, that allows us to work with those data cubes and, and such. And, and, and maybe uh, last two, two ideas before I, I, I give a voice to, to Robin. Um, one idea from this year, I think which was kind of, uh, or maybe the last year, which was um, mentioned a lot, was about web assembly. So ability to run R in the browser or to, and I think it's not yet in the spatial domain or at least not, I've seen maybe one or two examples, but I think the, the, the opportunities that it will give it, uh, may be important. And maybe to, to finish, I also, the, 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 the one important change that will happen soon is there will be team up version four. So new version of team up with new ideas, new, new code, uh, uh, also making easier to add new tools to team up. So I think that's also exciting. Someone want to react to that? If not, I move to the next question. Where is it? I could I just say one other thing that I, I think is interesting over the next few years. I think Jakub gave a really good summary and fully agree with that. One other thing is like this idea of alternative backends. So um, I think R is a really great interface language for representing stuff, and it allows you to think about spatial data at quite a high level in a way that's integrating integrated with amazing 
um, statistical analysis and visualization um, packages. Um, and at the moment, it's um, there's been a big shift from SP to SF, and then SF has gained a new backend since we start write, started writing the book, which is S2. And there are at least two alternative backends for processing um, vector data alone. So one of them is the GEOS package, um, which is really interesting. That seems to be super high performance, and I am interested to explore that. Another one that I only just discovered is that there is now an interface to um, the Rust, the, the Geo Rust ecosystem, which is also super high performance. And I've seen some uh, comments on that. So I, I'm going to share a link to the chat just to check, Olivia, where's the best place for me to share links? Where um, is it on, uh, on if the you, Zoom or in the Slack? If you, if you share them on the Zoom, it will be shared automatically on the Slack. So okay. both options yes. works. Yeah, so that's my addition, alternative backends, and the same applies to uh, raster data as well. Any, any remark, anyone? Um, I think I will go through all the questions and then we, maybe we can, and also like I would like to uh, give you a bit of time to ask questions also to the people who have read the book, if you have some question, like we'll say, I will save time for that also. Um, so Adam asked, uh, how do you see the future of AI in geocomputation, which is still related a bit to the question. Hard one. <laughs> I think we, we can do some guesses. Uh, and, and again, it's also about, uh, I think, uh, important it's about the definition of AI. How much would, what do we define about that? Is it uh, about the, the current large language models or is it about using uh, machine learning for spatial data? So this is, uh, this is, this is the one. So, um, and I think also it depends on the progress on the AI field, because in the last few months, we've seen this like very huge uh, change and shift but it, it's a largely depend because if this change will be maybe slower in the coming years or months, that then I can make 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 some guesses. Maybe there will be um, just sl slow evolution of maybe growing subfield into spatial data analysis, like uh, expansion of geo AI. There will be more tools. It will be similar like a few years back with uh, deep learning, or uh, or more more years back with uh, like using of random forest for spatial data. So it will be just like expansion of tools, expansion of ideas, maybe testing of these ideas for older problems, and 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 so on and so on. Um, but if that's only if the speed of the progress will not be very, very fast. But if the speed of the progress will be exponential, maybe we will not be here anymore. So who knows? Maybe the maybe that will be this this the maybe there is no future of geocomputation when the AI is 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 our our lord. Um but at the same time, I think that the current situation with the large language models and so on is already useful. You can I already am using some of the source ideas for um writing uh, tutorials or similar so you can already uh, maybe not directly think about space with those tools but those tools can help you spend your time more productively and then focus on maybe spatial problems or or actual li real life problems more robin what do you think yeah too early to tell i think uh, i can't think of anything specific about the ai conversation to to geo and i think um you've covered it well so i don't have anything uh, else to add to that Jakub. yeah so i will went i think it's your question for the do you want to ask it <laughs> oh, that the uh... You do it and uh, read, read it. Okay, I'm reading it. Uh, can you describe what it's like to write such a wonderful book? Uh, I'd say it was a lot of fun. I think um, doing things um, because you enjoy it is, the, is one of the best ways to make progress on it. And it reminds me of something that a professor at MIT said about um, his uh, people he works with. That, so he said he found that 
people who wake up in the morning and just do things that they want to do and they're interested in it um, seem to like be happier and therefore more productive than people who had a big strategy to try and get to a certain place. So we kind of went with our instincts on the book. We did work really hard on it. And um, I think we had, all of us had fewer family commitments um, when we started the, the book. So that's one thing that, that's changed is the amount of free time we have in the evenings and weekends. <laughs> and there have been multiple evenings and weekends working on it. But I would just say 100% worthwhile. Like I could have been playing a computer game. I could have been writing uh, another paper, but I think it's just been such a rewarding thing. And one of the most rewarding things is the community. And it's so great to see that there is genuinely a community and it's international and that's priceless. So uh, from my perspective, very positive experience. So maybe I can I can say uh, about me and uh, at first very scary. Uh, it was just for me the first few weeks of writing that or trying to write that was because we were pushing that uh, directly online. So every sentence you wrote that it will be online, and that was extremely scary. And I still remember my fears from from six years ago about that. Um, but yeah, after that I think it. I think we, all of us, we learned a ton uh, writing the book. And, and, and as Robin said, it was just um, for many, many months, I've been working like daily on the book. Not, not for a long time, but sometimes half an hour, sometimes one hour. And that was, and every day I could say, oh, I've, I've done something. I pushed something new. I made some new progress. And that was also uh, like very positive for, for, uh for me and I, I really enjoy that and i'm still doing that so i'm I, and yeah i think that's that's a that's a very nice uh, way of showing that that we are still doing that we are still uh expanding we are still thinking about new ideas and uh the second edition is is uh getting more and more complete so so i think that's uh um yeah i, I think we i cannot think about like bad memories I think that we we're able. I think Robin was is very good about that. We're able to uh, work on the book, and sometimes we had some different visions, but we're always happy with to discuss, and we're always open to other people's ideas. And uh, so the so yeah, so I think it's I can only say good words about that. Yeah. So maybe I will go with your question, Robin. Like uh, you ask us if we have testing JOS or the um, Rust version. I mean the Rust uh, backend of it. I can say for myself that you I use it JOS a lot for point data uh, because it's easier to manage the indexes and stuff like that. I feel from myself. But since uh, I'm on the private sectors, I'm, I, I need very basic uh, <laughs> tools. So most of the time, I'm just using a very simple SF uh, with very simple data, I will say. I don't know if you also have used it. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a similar situation where the use of tools is very basic. Yeah, I think that's like the triangle that if the tool is very broad, more people more people are using that, and that when the tool is more specific or more guided towards some 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 community, it will be less use of it. But I I, I agree with Robin that uh, um, maybe maybe there there will be uh, the third edition of the book will be about geos and so on. Who knows? Okay. One, of the, one of the nice things about the level of this book is the use cases help illustrate what is possible. Uh, I think uh, um, in, in some cases, people have difficulty even imagining what R could be used to solve, what sort of problems could be solved. And there's, there's some nice um, uh, maybe introductory use cases that we can relate to, like the bike shops. And uh, so that that is a is a wonderful entry point in, into understanding what's possible. Um, yeah, we we didn't dig down into um, the advantages of uh, these underlying packages. Other people want to react to that. I move to the other question. 
Okay. Um, Anonymous asked, how do you select the topics and the data set in your showcase? So it's related also to the question of Jim and the intervention of Jim. can say something i'll start specific so um the yeah one of my favorite data sets in there is new zealand just the nz objects because it's we we spent actually quite a lot of time thinking about well what should i test data set be and we had a series of criteria um it shouldn't be it, it should be somewhere that that's recognizable um something that people can relate to and then the fact that New Zealand was actually where R was invented was, was kind of cool. So that was one of the reasons. And we hadn't seen that many example data sets of New Zealand. Like a lot of them were of the USA, like the, the famous NC data set in um, SF. And I believe, Jakub can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it has a projected coordinate reference system, which meant that the distance calculations and stuff worked out of the box. Um, yeah. as an alternative to the world object, which has a um, CRS of a, a coordinate system that's um, like in latitude, longitude. So that's just one example. Um, I think that's very specific, but that's one that I, I really enjoy, um, like thinking about somewhere that's on totally the other side of the planet rather than just doing uh, where I'm based. So yeah, Yaku may want to say something broader about the topics and data sets. But yeah, that's yeah I, I think we need to find some uh, people who are interested in history to dive deep into why we decide on that. I, I try to rem remember exactly, and it's hard. Uh, but definitely one 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 thing that Robin mentioned, it's for sure. So we've got the, the world data set, which is like very basic, and it's not hard to think about. And then we have this New Zealand, which is mid uh, size, but in projected coordinates. And then we also needed to have something even in a smaller area. So that, that's the Zion data with, when we have a DEM and we have uh, land cover. So we've, the, the story behind Zion is that uh, in early 2017, I went there with, with my wife and we uh, enjoyed the Zion National Park. So, so I thought, oh, this is a nice place because there is uh, this changes in elevation, different land cover classes and so on. So I think it also suited the those three levels of, of data sets. And then I think, um, we also use some data sets from Yannis' uh, work. So uh, data set from, from his work that it's used in the later chapters. And also we use some uh, points from bike uh, points from, uh, from London, from Robin's, uh, that was a Robin's idea. So, so yeah, I think that, 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 that the ter three, three types of data sets, so the world, uh, New Zealand and and Zion, they were the, like our basics, basic uh, data sets. And then we, uh, sometimes we, we we thought, oh, we need to show also this tool or that tool, and then we added the bike data sets and, and so on and so on. I'm waiting a bit of time. Someone want to react? Um, okay, building on chapter, I mean, we are going to go a bit more like into the implementation, I guess, on chapter 13, 14, and 15. Um, comments on where industry choose non-air tool. Why, why do you think industry choose non-air tool and why? And will there be in uh, be an agriculture chapter, aviation, supply chain, or climate? So I can say something about the, the final chapter idea about climate. So there was an idea to, and there still is an idea to have a, a chapter on climate change mitigation. Um, the the whole book kind of starts out by saying in chapter one that geocomputation is applied. It should be used for uh, real world research, not just theoretical. And if you want to change the world, it helps to understand the world first. And R is is one tool that that can really help with that. And I think climate change is definitely a, a big problem that links to a lot of the ideas in geocomputation with R. It's about science. And a lot of the scientific research about climate change uses open source reproducible data analysis in languages like R and Python. So um, there's a lot of amazing research on how to solve the problem. So that's one that I would really like to add. And we have 
talks about the idea of having like an Easter egg chapter that's only available in the um, in the print edition. But I cannot promise that that will be in there because we we are um, like going full speed just to complete um, the existing chapters and get those up to speed. So that's one comment on the uh, climate one, and that would be my number one if we do add another ap applied chapter. Yeah, and I, I can only add that there is a page limit that we need to uh, limit ourselves on. So that's, and we are, I think, already above the limit. Um, so so it's, it's, it will be hard to, to, to do that. But on this, at the same time, I think we are also uh, writing blog posts. We are writing uh, examples in our packages and so on. So the, I think there are some pieces of, uh, maybe not exactly of agriculture chapter, but in my work, I often do some landscape ecology things and I'm sharing blog posts and documentation on, and so on. So there are some pieces of, of it that you can use. And the same with Robin work about transportation, you can find uh, different documentation of different tools. And, and I think it could be uh, already think of as, as a starting point. Um, and also I think what's, what's very important to mention uh, the book started with me and Robin, but the Yannis uh, uh, was joined joined the team because he had many ideas about what to add and and what to do, and we like his ideas. And also, a lot of people um, added their own ideas, either just fixing few typos, but sometimes adding a paragraph or few. So, if some of you have an idea or maybe skeleton, we can we are open to discussion. We can we can always work on that. It doesn't need to be to direct it for the book, but it could be just to share with other people and help other people, as Jim said, help other people to open their imagination of to what, what is possible. Great. Uh, I, I, have, I went a bit back on the question because there was a question that was voted uh, for it. Uh, could you provide some insight into the research or methodology behind the geocomputational case feature in the book? I think we answered it a bit, but if you can provide a bit more about it, and then, or if not, I go to the next one as you like. Could, could you could you repeat the question? Yeah, so sorry. The research underlying uh, the research underlying yeah the, the, the book itself or the the chapter. I, I think, think I think it's, it's about the, the applied the last three chapters of the, okay the, yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah, I think the other thing to say is each of those chapters aligns to our own research, and this is where we can kind of express ourselves. Um, so each of us wrote something that, um, yeah, like is, is linked to something we're interested in. So the area that I've applied this to, or one area is, uh, transport planning and, uh, the underlying research, I guess, um, is quite applied in the sense that there's a known problem that we need more evidence on, um, where interventions in the transport system are likely to be most uh, effective and a lot of the time people just guess transport planning is part art part science but in reality it could be made more scientific so um, I've done some research in that area and I actually used the the transport going back to Jakub's point about writing the book for ourselves um, I actually refer to many of my students back to uh, ch chapter 13 on transport as like a starting point with how to think about the transport system in geographic data terms. Um, and there's a lot of research into that. How do you prioritize interventions in a complex transport system? So I could say a lot more about it, but um, I'm sure Jakub's got something to say on um, one or more of the other chapters. Yeah, so uh, I don't, another chapter, the, the other chapters, so the, uh, the chapter about uh... Uh, uh, about uh, geo marketing and the chapter about the, the ecology chapter. They were, they were the main author is Yanis, uh, so he's the main author of those chapters. Uh, and I think he used his experience and knowledge. Uh, geo marketing was from his work, and and ecology was for, from his uh, PhD studies. So he also the same as Robin. He just poured his knowledge uh, and and his experience into those chapters. Um, but going back to the, the transportation chapter, I think it's also nice to see the progress or the change of the chapter, because the, this chapter, all of those chapters were in the first edition and they are they will be with us in the second edition. 
but there is a large change between i think transportation chapter changed a lot between the first edition and the second edition and it's not not about changing the tools or at least not uh much about changing tools but it's i think more it's going more into details it shows uh better solutions it gives more ideas so i think it's a nice way to see how we progress or our ideas progress with time so it's definitely not a stale uh, solutions and stay methodology, but we are still thinking about those topics and we are thinking about how to make them better and how to solve those problems uh, broader. Yeah. I have a, a quick question, I guess. Will Red Shaders rendering be in the next version of the book? Red Shaders. <laughs> um, I will think not. Um, only it, it 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 is mentioned, but they would I I we do not plan to give any examples or uh, at least extended examples because I've been using uh, Ray Shader for small things, but I'm not an expert and I don't feel confident enough to uh, to write anything about it. So that's uh, that's my thinking. Um, and but who knows? We will see. We'll see. Um, because we maybe I can also expand about that because when we started writing the second edition, of course, we made a list of our ideas, what what should be at or can be at the second edition. And I think Ray Shader was one of the ideas we thought about adding. But as always, you need to think what not only about what can be added, but also what you want to add, uh, because it's it's our book. It, you need to have some subjective opinion about it. And also you need to know what you can uh, actually explain and provide because if I don't explain if I don't understand something well I shouldn't write about it uh, or at least I don't feel confident writing about it and on the other hand if I feel at least confident if I, I'm a uh, regular user I can try to understand more and then I can try to maybe uh, dissolve that to the to the readers so that uh, that is that's my thinking about that I try to uh, actually I'd spent few days maybe even more a writing section about Ray Shader, and then I said, "Oh no, I, I don't. I, I'm definitely not feel confident enough for that." Maybe if I could interject here, uh, Derek, when um, covered uh, one of the chapters on the book, uh, we we uh, we had some excellent New Zealand animations that that I thought were very uh, very clever in conveying. Uh, some of the ideas of of that chapter, and and in some ways, um, at least in terms of teaching, I thought I thought they were excellent. Yeah. So if you could share us uh, share those uh, with okay. us on our uh, GitHub issues, and then we can have a discussion. Then because still book is not uh, finished, so we can still add something. We can still uh, remove something. It's still work in progress. So if you have a good examples. Yeah, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm always open for that. I think, uh, well, I will share it later because uh, we are running. Uh, I have just a quick question. And then after, like, maybe you have, like, uh, you want to add more? Do I do I'm missing some question? I don't think so. The last one is, like, um, someone is sharing uh, uh, the GitHub of The Economist. And the uh, Economist Wi-Fi uh, model and a recent article in the Economist open source is such a great fit for journalists. Do you have other example of open source using uh, in another community that may be science? So yeah, you have the, the journalist one. We have no. I can think of some other journalists or, or journals using R because uh, I remember that a few years ago there was an example of BBC using the or having their, their own Gplot2 style. So they are they for sure they be using. And a um, few months ago, I discovered that the head of data at BBC is actually uh, I think his name is Joseph Bailey, and he is a creator of uh, our package called GeoGrid. So so there is a those are like very interesting connections between spatial data and and journalism and R. Um, but also, um, a few years ago, I gave a talk, and there were some examples, I believe, from New York Times. So they are also been using R for for visualization, um, and I, I'm I'm sure that several other uh, venues also are, are doing that. Uh, the the only question is, 
Um, I assume that some of them are even using R just for data processing, and then they're using some Java JavaScript tool for visualization and so on. Um, uh, I, I guess I'm familiar with the Economist story. I, the, their source data is forest fire data from NASA. And he's built a machine learning model to separate what is a forest fire in Ukraine from what is likely a thermal event from some other means to be able to talk about the, the, the conflict, the, the locations of the conflict. And because there aren't journalists there in the conflict zone. And um, I, the machine learning methods, I guess, um, it is like open source. They share the code they use. Is is it? Uh, is this sort of approach to journalism, uh, uh, say, appropriate? And is it is it something to mention in the book? Is it? Yeah, for sure. I think I think as Robin mentioned, we the idea of the book was about like not only about oh we will teach you how to use R, but also how to apply this to real life. And this is the very good example of that. So so maybe you can think of adding that somewhere in the maybe in the last chapter as an example of what what could be what can be done because um, for sure there are probably not a lot of uh, fields that could have more impact than journalism or on regular people. Uh, do okay. We are we are like uh, we have bit we have bit like a, let's say like five minutes more. Do we have some question uh, for us? Do you have like I may be spelling on your name, Derek, but don't correct it. <laughs> if you have question, go ahead. If not, that's perfect. We'll be on time. So well, Oliver, was... just give me just give me a second to yeah. say <laughs> once more that we are open for ideas. So and also for critical ideas, for some comments and so on. So if you, uh, because you, from what I know, you read the book, you know the book very uh, much, and you know what are the pros and cons, what could be done better and maybe improved. So just let us know. We are open uh, for discussion. We're always open for for those kind of feedback. Um, that's part of the of, of writing of, of this whole writing all writing in the open experience and and this community experience. Uh, it's uh it's it's great and that's why this is partially because we have this connection and we have this contact. So so feel uh, open and free to to do that. Yeah good point. So you can contact uh, Robin and Jakub um well, through the geocomputation uh, community. Uh, so you go into the website, you have link for Discord, you have link for GitHub. Uh, feel free to add me more. I'm not much on Twitter anymore. Like it's, it's my rebel attitude, but you can contact Robin and, and Jakub in, in Mastodon. Uh, yeah, and go for it. So um, yeah, if you have like another place that I miss maybe, and obviously, in the air for data science, uh, hopefully there will be another like um, book club uh, that will run on it uh, when other people want to do it. Um, that's it. Well, Amazing. thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks uh, a lot, Jakub and Robin, for that. Um, yeah, hopefully, I will have uh, the physical copy soon of the second edition. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Thanks a lot, everyone. Olivia. Thank, Thank you, everyone. you, everyone. Great to see Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 And, uh...